having looked at the TARDIS consoles of the 1st, 3rd and 8th Doctors, as well as the 1980s console, it is time to return to arguably the most important of the TARDIS consoles of the classic series. Important in that it was used by Tom Baker's 4th Doctor, who for many encapsulates all that makes the Doctor. So in this video, we will explore this, the third console prop built for the BBC television series Doctor Who. In 1975, John Pertwee bowed out and was succeeded by Tom Baker. With a new Doctor came a new console prop, and whilst it echoed the Pertwee era prop, there were a few differences. The metal panels initially used to cover repairs to the old console now appeared more liberally as part of the design. The colour scheme changed from the pale green of yesteryear to a cream white hue. The green components of the central column were replaced by red, although much of the Pertwee time rotor was inherited by the Baker console. Overall, this third console prop had cleaner lines and was tidier. Here we see the console as it first appeared in Season 13. On this panel, we can see something familiar to us from the first and second console props. Six lights, destined not to last, but a welcome carryover. In the lower centre is a lever similar to that on the previous console. This lever was frequently used in the past as the materialisation control, and was used for the same purpose in the Sunmakers of 1977, although it was also rather confusingly used to open the TARDIS doors in The Invisible Enemy, also of 1977. Another notable feature of the console is this monitor. It was a dummy prop. But it wasn't until the tenure of Peter Davison's Fifth Doctor, when the script required it, that a working monitor was installed. Circular features abound on this console prop. Here we have the first of two clear plastic domes. In this case covering five devices rather like eyes. This console as a whole was used a few times for inputting coordinates. At this stage, this second clear plastic dome covered a circuit board. It was not to last. By season 15, it had been replaced by an equally circular display. Close by, we see our old friend, the door handle. Literally the door handle. There are four on this console. The second door handle is over here, although it would not last either. Of all the panels on this prop, this one would undergo the most changes over time. Even having a dot matrix computer printer fitted right smack in the centre. This panel has a few interesting features. They're the final two of our door handles. They're twin levers, the purpose of which is either to close the TARDIS doors or to materialise the TARDIS. Both operations were performed by these levers over the course of the series. There are two multicoloured displays fitted with glare shields. The shield on the left hand display would be lost in 1978, during, or just before the making of, the Pirate Planet. As mentioned, over the course of the series, the console prop changed. Even the six panels didn't stay where they were meant to stay, but moved around, changing position again and again. The first time this happened was for Planet of Evil, but then season 14 came along and we were introduced to the secondary control room. We will come to that later. When we saw the new console prop again in the season 15 story The Invisible Enemy, it had lost the ridges between the panels and the console had been repainted a light grey colour. A number of smaller changes were made to the individual panels themselves. As the season progressed, the panels again changed position. By the key to time, the rim of the console prop had been painted black. A curious addition to one panel appeared in the finale to season 16, a silver box called the Randomizer. It had just as quickly disappeared by the beginning of Season 17, and then reappeared in Destiny of the Daleks, and disappeared again in Horns of Namon. This random randomizer appeared, when it did appear, on this panel. Later on, another addition was made to it, a socket for a Mark III emergency transceiver. As the console prop and the series headed into the 1980s, more alterations were made. The black rim was repainted silver, a red device was added to one of the panels. The aforementioned dot matrix computer printer appeared, 
and three metallic caps were fitted to the time rotor. As Tom Baker's tenure reached its finale, something new emerged from the depths of the TARDIS console. This was the Chameleon Circuit Control Keyboard, which rose up out of one panel. Peter Davidson inherited the console prop, and with it came more alterations. The most notable were the replacement of the dummy monitor with a working monitor, the replacement of the grills at the top of each panel with a more intriguing device that seemed to be some sort of viewing instrument, and the final transformation of this panel. We saw the five-sided pyramidal device for the first time, it later appearing on the next console prop, and strange golden square objects. One of the metallic panels even changed colour. Many of these changes were made just prior to the 20th anniversary of Doctor Who, but the third TARDIS console prop was by now in its endgame, and would be replaced in 1983 by a new console. Early in the tenure of Tom Baker, Doctor Who producer Tom Hinchcliffe chose to introduce the secondary console room, this somewhat Jules Verne inspired room was designed by Barry Newbury, who had designed the TARDIS exterior commonly known as the Newbury Box. It was panelled in oak and had stained glass decoration. The console room, not the TARDIS exterior. Although that would have been a very, very bold move. This room also came with its own console. Smaller than the main console, it was six sided and had a particular bureau quality to it. Its buttons and instruments were hidden behind hatches, and you half expected the Doctor to reach in and retrieve a decanter of port and a cigar. In many ways, it seemed to match the vaguely Edwardian style of Baker's Doctor, and the console and its console room may have pointed the way towards the later console of the 8th Doctor. But with season 15, we returned to the customary console room, and the oak panelling, brass railings and stained glass decoration disappeared. 